So I'm here in this young, replanted second growth forest, and right away, we can see that things here look pretty different from many of the second growth forests that cover all of Cascadia. I mean, heck, check out this big old dug fir that's just out here hanging, just kicking it with all these second growth trees. Are you kidding me? See, this is a privately managed woodlot, and right away we can see a couple key differences with management practices that go a really long way. So first off, this is a much smaller working area than a traditional cut block, just over two hectares, whereas most cut blocks are 20 to 30 and can be up to 200 hectares in size. And this smaller working area means that the effects of the logging done here aren't going to have as big of an impact across the broader ecosystem as compared to a larger working area. When we spin around, we can actually see the edges of this whole working area, um, all immediately surrounded by some second growth forest that's in dire need of a thin, for sure, but Having walked much of this woodlot, the rest of these lands are mostly second growth forests of varying ages and densities that still include a couple big old growth Douglas firs over that way. So overall, uh, diversity is pretty well maintained, which is awesome. And we can see that in action here. See, they've left some of these bigger older Douglas firs here that are a couple hundred years old with that one right there looking to be about the oldest in this little block here, probably about 250 years old based on the deeply furrowed bark and the complex crown. Now this is a tactic known as seed tree harvesting, which these bigger trees here are left so that this smaller harvest area retains more diversity of ages of trees while still actively seeding the younger generation of forest that will follow along with trees like these cedars here that were replanted so that as this forest ages, it retains a more natural diversity of not only tree species, but ages and sizes, which better replicate succession from natural disturbances. This method also better preserves the hydrological function of this ecosystem system than clear cutting though still not perfectly um, with big intact root systems that reduce erosion as well as some down logs and woody debris that's been left here which is going to add complexity to the forest floor uh, now this method is not flawless see these bigger older trees here are still you know they're kind of out in the open now which means they're more susceptible to wind throw and even in this small stand it's probably only five maybe ten percent retention so if they had left even more of these bigger older trees standing maybe 30 to 40 percent retention that would reduce wind throw quite a bit and further improve ecological function um, critics of seed tree harvesting also like to point out that it still creates a mostly even age stand of second growth forest which isn't good for ecological function and at bigger scales that's certainly true but you know in a small area like this with varying ages of, of surrounding stands I'd say it's not too bad and certainly much better than a cut block where all this would have just been leveled. Yet when this forest is harvested again in about 60 to 70 years, it's these bigger older trees that are gonna be the most valuable and likely sought after ones. So even if this practice is repeated then, there's not going to be any 200 plus year old trees to take their place when the next generation of trees is replanted. So generally, this practice still takes more from the forest ecosystem than it can regenerate naturally in a given harvest period, which means that in the long run, we're still operating at a deficit of wood mass, which isn't sustainable no matter how you spin it. This method is also a lot more costly and tedious than strip or block clear cut methods as it requires more thoughtful management and planning with you know people on the ground looking at the ecology, the hydrology of the area, and you have to figure out how to get your harvested logs out of here without damage the trees you've left behind, which takes more time and skilled workers. Thus, it's often not executed on large scales by these publicly traded companies that operate on our crown and public lands because it's far easier for them to just, you know, cut as much as possible without tending to the lands or caring for the state it's left in beyond the minimum requirements, all in an effort to create more value for their shareholders. So while this is by no means perfect, this little forest here demonstrates how management of woodlots by smaller communities, individuals, or groups with true attention, care, and investment in the health of these lands can operate with better practices that preserve the ecological function of these forests while also creating employment for a wide range of skilled workers and still getting timber. We need to change the way that we think and operate on these lands from a cut and run mentality to one that takes attentive, calculated, and compassionate care of these lands on which we all depend. It is totally possible to do things better by doing things differently. We just need to incentivize and reward management strategies like this one here that prioritize ecological and community values over ones that favor myopic economic gains.